Praise be to God, children. Good morning. Today we are moving on to the third part of your second chapter. In the previous class, we learned that the growth and development of the church was not an easy task. A lot of people who believed in Christianity, including the apostles, had to sacrifice their life. We saw that only Apostle John was the only person who, who had not become martyr. All the other apostles were killed. They became martyr for Jesus Christ. Many faithful. We know the first martyr of church is Saint Stephen. But the thing is that every one of them were so keen to sacrifice their life for Jesus. They were happy to sacrifice their life for Jesus. And that is the success of church. We saw about the factors that contributed to the growth of church and one among was that they had deep-rooted faith and was ready to sacrifice their life to uphold their faith. Right? So faith is what makes us stand here. Now it's our duty to maintain this faith and even to grow our faith in Jesus Christ. Now, in the beginning of this chapter, we learned about the beginning of the church, how the church was established and when it was established. We saw that it was on a Pentecost day. So, uh, the church was first developed in Jerusalem because this thing happened in Jerusalem. Then we saw that it spread to the neighboring countries. Now, we are going to see how it spread to the whole world. So, here... First, we are seeing about the church in Europe. The church that was formed in Italy in the first century spread to Germany and France in the second and third century. See, first it was formed in Italy in the first century. Then it took, see how many years it took two centuries to spread to Germany and France. But it was in sixth century that the preaching of Christ teaching gained considerable strength in Europe. Even though it started in 1st century, it gained power in the 6th century. The church which existed in England in the early centuries became completely non-existent with the occupation of Anglo-Saxons. See, in the earlier century itself, church was formed in England. But after the occupation of Anglo-Saxons, so who are these Anglo-Saxons? Any member of the Germanic people who inhabited and ruled the territory of England are known as Anglo-Saxons. So these people who occupied there recently did not want a new religion to come up. They didn't believe in Christ. So Christianity in England which was formed earlier was had become non-existent. Now how who has re-established the church? Let's see. It was Augustine the Benedictine monk who was appointed by Pope Gregory I in AD 596 re-established the church in England and because of that he is known as the Apostle of Christianity in England. So note the name, it is Augustine the Benedictine monk who re-established the church in Europe, in England and that is why he is known as the Apostle of Christianity. Under his leadership, Christian faith was accepted by all the people of England. See how much of pressure and work he might have taken. Because even all the people in England became faithful. In the 8th and 9th centuries, Christianity was established in Scandinavia, Denmark, Sweden, Norway, Iceland, Bohemia, Poland, Bulgaria, Hungary and Russia. See, it started spreading. Now you might have understood how it started spreading or how church started establishing different, different countries. Right? Now, the church in Asia. That is important because we are in Asia and it's our duty to understand how it came to Asia. From the 13th century, the church started its activities in India. During the Renaissance, Several adventurous travelers journeyed through land and sea to enhance trade between Asian and Western countries. So the main reason of traveling during those times was trade. 
so uh, during renaissance renaissance means a period of european culture where they travel to different countries they explore different countries uh, for trade that is known as renaissance so during this period uh, they got the sea route they started traveling to india and for establishing trade between asian and western countries so along with these traders and travelers the christian missionaries also traveled to these countries as a result of their missionary activities sri lanka cambodia maldives siam and southeastern countries began to receive christian missionaries and help their activities so along with these traders they came to different countries and started their activities in the 15th century with the arrival of portuguese missionaries the christian church gained strength in india so it was the portuguese missionaries who established strength in india following this christianity spread to sri lanka and japan also it was the jesuit priest who led the spread of church in japan on august 15 1549 st francis xavier reached japan when he returned from japan in 1551 that is after 2 years about 2000 people had accepted christianity see st francis xavier came to rep japan on august 15 1549 and after 2 years that is after a uh, 1551 almost 2000 people in japan had accepted christianity during the persecutions in 1560 many people fled from that country see that is what happened almost 2000 or more than 2000 people accepted christianity in japan but because of persecutions persecutions means killing for a reason so here killing for a reason means that those emperors didn't want a new religion to come up and it was against their rule so they started killing people who believed in christianity so many christians flew from that country that is why now we don't see much christians in japan during the persecutions in 1560 many people fled from that country however the church grew in strength as a result of missionary activities of francis cabral and alessandro valignano but is there no church in japan no japan also has a lot of faithful there how even though people started moving from that country the church grew strength because of the missionary activities of francis cabral and alessandro valignano in the 17th century though there were cruel persecutions the persecutors could not destroy the church because our head of the church is christ and the people who follow the christ are so much deep rooted in faith they were ready to sacrifice their life so even though there were a lot of cruel persecutions they were firm in their faith and church started to grow they couldn't destroy the church saint gonzalo garcia is a famous missionary who was crucified in nagasaki in 1597 yet another martyr that is saint gonzalo garcia he had done a lot of missionary works and later on he was crucified in nagasaki now we have seen about asia uh, and also we have seen about japan now le- let's see about china two attempts were made to establish church in china in the 17th century they were not successful because we know uh, china is a country with monarchy so their rulers have the utmost power people can't take their own decision it was all under the emperors so even though a lot of missionary works happened there the faith did not get much deep rooted there even to the people wanted to get converted they were not allowed because and also they had to undergo a lot of cruel persecutions in thailand and philippines the church was established in the 16th century as a result of missionary activity of dominican priest and other missionaries in philippines though the church had to suffer great persecution it achieved great progress later with the help of missionary activities of various monks so many countries are retrieved from their cruel persecutions they even though after cruel persecution they had deep rooted faith now let's see about the africa and american continents in africa uh, which is a dark continent 
the church was established during the 15th century. That is in 1491, the Dominican priest converted Don Govo, the king of Congo, to Christianity. See, here what happened. In all other countries, the emperors were against it. That's why cruel persecution happened. But here in Africa, what the missionaries did was, at first, they converted their king. The king of Congo was converted into Christianity. Uh, and the name of the person was Don Govo. When he became Christian, then he had the tendency to convert all the people to Christianity, right? Because he believes in Christianity and that was a very good move, right? They built some churches also. Later, by the efforts of Jesuit priests and Capuchin priests, the church spread all over Africa. And likewise, Africa had become a Christian country. In the Middle American countries like Mexico, the church was established as a result of missionary activities of monks. In the beginning of the 16th century, Christian faith spread over South American countries such as Venezuela, Colombia, Peru and Brazil. And that's about the South African, South America. Now, in North America, because of the strong op opposition from Red Indians in the initial stages till the end of 16th century, missionary activities were prevented. See, it was much easier in Middle American countries and also in South American countries. But here in the North America, there were opposition from Red Indians. So it was difficult. But later on, in 1612, Franciscan missionaries carried on missionary work with great energy. And by 1634, 30,000 persons had accepted Christianity. See, they had faith, so they didn't lose hope. They worked, worked and worked. Sometimes even after centuries is, uh, is where the people gain faithfulness. But still, they did not leave their work. Now, church in Australia. The original church in the land of kangaroos, Australia, were the convicts who were exiled from Ireland and England. So the first Christians there was the people who were exiled from Ireland and England because they accepted Christianity there and they, the emperor there didn't want them to stay there. So it was easier in Australia. Then in 19th century missionary works were started in Australia under the direct guidance of Pope Pius VII. In 1818, Jeremiah Flynn, a Cistercian monk, was appointed as apostolic prefect by the Pope. The church was established in New Zealand in 1928. The history of the church shows that church grew in all parts of the world facing unfavorable circumstances. From here, we can understand that the growth of church was never easy. It had to face a lot of unfavorable circumstances. And this chapter is here to make you understand that how important faith is, how important uh, deep-rooted faith is, how important unconditional love is. And the church that we see today was not did not happen in a very quick manner. It had to undergo a lot of unfavorable circumstances. The church is built on the blood of the martyrs. Thousands of missionaries work tirelessly for the growth of the church. The recent crisis always present in the church. Now, Avignon Papacy. What is Avignon Papacy? Papacy is a town, is an office or an authority of Pope and Avignon a town in southwestern France. So what is Avignon Papacy? That is a, a place or authority where the Pope stays and that too, uh, that was in a town in southeastern France. Now let's see what happened there. When Clement V in 1305 to 1314 was elected as Pope in 1305, the headquarters of Pope was shifted from Rome to Avignon. The political atmosphere in Rome was not safe. Many Popes who came after them chose to reside in Avignon. See, we know. The papacy is in Rome and even now it's in Rome. But during the period of 1305 to 1377, almost for a long period of time, the papacy was shifted from 
Rome to Avignon, that is in, a, in south eastern France. The reason was that the political atmosphere in Rome was not good. They had, the popes had threat. So, uh, during 1305, uh, that present elected Pope Clement V moved to Avignon. Then after that, almost seven popes who came after him chose to reside in Avignon. But St. Catherine of Siena visited Pope Gregory XI and pleaded him in the name of God to return to Rome. Accordingly, Pope Gregory XI left Avignon in January 17, 1377 and entered Rome. The Dark Age, which is the Dark Age of Church, let's see. The time of the Church in Middle Age is known as the Dark Age of the Church. So, the Middle Age. That is a dark age. During this period, the feudal lords, that is the legal or military lords, manifested their influence in matters of church. They interfered in the appointments of bishops and in handling the properties of church. The church authorities assumed corrupt ways to attain important positions. Finally, the dark ages ended through the efforts of German Emperor Otto I. John 13 was elected as Pope. So that's it for the third, second chapter. Next week, we will start our third chapter, which is about the persecutions. There you will understand more difficulties. This was how it uh, started spreading to different countries, right? Now, in the third chapter, we will be seeing how difficult more difficulties because of persecutions and because of a lot of propagandas. We will see to it in the next class. So till then, take care, be in love with Jesus Christ and be happy, pray to God and pray for the whole world that is suffering. Thank you.